This is for my babies. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my channel if you are new. So today, um, I basically got DM'd like so many times about making this sweater, asking how to make it and stuff like that. So I looked on the internet and I couldn't find the sweater, but I found something similar that kind of showed me how I could go about making it. So I went ahead and I tried it just like it was in the picture, but I just made a pattern out of it. So we are gonna go ahead and take a look at this sweater. So it's basically um, a sweater that has, it's basically a panel that has two sleeves. And it's very uncomfortable to wear. So I suggest that you sew the wrap part, um, the part that crosses in the front. I suggest that once you complete it and you put it on and make it the size that you want, that you go ahead and stitch mark the area that I'm about to show you. So the area with the green line over it, I feel like that part should be stitched to each other just the way that it is. So when you put it on, it can automatically fall that way and you won't have to worry about it coming open or being uncomfortable when you wear it. But this is about like a really weird sweater thing. Like I don't know who made it, who came up with it, where it came from. I never seen a pattern for it. Then again, I don't read patterns and I don't look at them. So I don't know, but I tried my best and I didn't do it in a small stitch or with a smaller yarn. I just tried to hurry up and get it out the way because it definitely looked like it was going to take me forever, but it didn't. It only took me um, a few hours. So like I said, I tried my best and you can see how it turned out and modify it yourself because I'm definitely going to modify mine and sew it together um, at the parts where I feel like it should be sewed at. I'm also going to line the inside of it so it's a bit warmer and it's not see-through at all. So that is enough talking about this um, wrap sweater thing. Let's go ahead and get into the video. So I'm using a yarn that I got from AC Moore. I believe it is a weight four yarn. It's very soft and fluffy. Then we're going to use a 5.5 millimeter hook or six millimeter hook, whichever one you want. A tape measure, some cute stitch markers I got from Hobby Lobby. And you're also gonna need a pair of scissors. So to start off, I made a chain um, of 24. Well, you do a slip knot first, sorry guys. <laughs> I'm trying to help and do beginner steps, but it's really hard for me because I just jump into it. So either way, I chained 24 chains. That equaled out to about seven inches for me, and that went around my wrist area. So it's basically the cuff. In the picture, the cuff is pretty long, and it looks like it's um, it looks like it's all knit stitch. But you could do a rib stitch if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to actually recreate what the sweater looked like. So I'm just going to go ahead and single crochet back down those 24 stitches that we just made and once you do that it's basically the same pattern from here on out until you get to your 28 rows or however many rows you need it because 28 rows was seven inches for me so yeah at the end of every row you want to chain one and then you go ahead and single crochet into the next stitch that chain one is counting as a stitch in this pattern for me it doesn't have to for you because you can do whatever stitch you want but like i said most of my videos are just guidelines to how you can make things so basically this is after all 28 rows were finished i was just counting right there to make sure i had 28 rows and i did so that's 28 rows of single crochet and that also measured to seven inches. So then you just want to fold over your cuff and you want to single crochet or slip stitch. Slip, st slip stitch will be a little bit tighter than a single crochet would be. So just pay attention to that if you wanted to slip stitch, but I am going to single crochet the whole cuff together from each from one end to the other end. Sorry guys, I'm trying to get <laughs> comfortable with explaining things and not saying um and not saying it in a roundabout way and just getting straight to the point. 
because I don't want people to be confused and have a lot of questions afterwards. I want you to be very confident when you're making anything that you decide to make, especially if it's from my channel. And you guys, this is not my pattern. I'm not claiming it. I just redid whatever I saw in my mind. And if it could help anybody out, then I'm glad. So anyway, I am finished all the way at the end. I have stitched up my whole cuff. And now I'm just going to leave the cuff off to the side. And we're going to get started on the body portion. I have already completed one side of my project already and you'll see that later so i'm just making another um slip knot and we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started with the body so i chained 158 chains y'all sorry if you just heard that noise it's my little air freshener it's like a a time censored um thing and it just blew out some <laughs> fragrance but anyway so I basically just wrapped um, a measuring tape around my arms to where I felt like I wanted the sweater to be the length of it. And I just chained a, a chain that was um, equal to that length. So I chained 158. Y'all, I felt like I was making a, a blanket, like I was gonna make a baby blanket or something. I was like, oh my God, this is so tedious. But it's cute and I'm gonna loom it next time, like loom knit. I bet you it'll be way cuter if I do that, but it still turned out all right for um, a first go round of it. So yeah, after you do these chains, I am using half double crochet. So I am basically going to chain two and then I'm going to half double crochet into the third chain or the chain that you're holding after you chain two. You just place half double, half double crochet across all 158 chains or however many chains you did. I would consider my size um, a extra small or small, maybe even a medium. So I don't know if that'll help you um, gauge how many chains you should make i don't know but your yarn will depend too and my yarn is pretty stretchy so i probably didn't have to do 158 but i did just to be safe so basically you're just gonna have to crochet all the way down and you're gonna repeat this back and forth for however many rows you need for some reason i just stopped at 28 rows and it was good for me this is what your stitches should look like if you're doing half double crochet. So anyway, like I said, I did mine for 28 rows. So here we go with the 28 rows finished. And it might not look like it's long enough, but I have a short torso and I don't really have any breasts. So <laughs> I'm pretty small and it definitely fit me so... I don't know how it would fit someone else who had a bigger bust than me or something like that. But you guys know how to crochet, so just make it work for you. So basically, I'm just showing you one side that I finished, and that's a reference. So I stitched up part of the panel that we made, and then I attached the cuff to it on the end. And basically, that was completely all I did. That's what it looked like in the picture. So I just recreated that to the best of my ability. Yeah, so that's what it looks like and that's exactly what I'm about to show you to do um, on the other side. So, I don't know how this would work um, if your panel was super duper huge, but I'm pretty sure you could still make it work. My sleeve, um, the sleeve right here was way bigger, of course, because I had 28 rows of half double crochet and my um my sleeve cuff was only, what, 28 rows of single crochet or 24 rows of single crochet, one of those. So there are two different sizes, but I made it work because you definitely can make it work. So I'm just counting up 24 stitches. I don't know why I chose 24. I got a lot of 24s and 48s and 58s going on. These numbers are weird. <laughs> 
So I just chose to count up 24 stitches and that's how far up I'm going to stitch my sleeve. And that's the part where my arm would go into to put on the whole outfit. And I didn't show me putting it on because I didn't have a shirt on underneath it when I, um, when I tried it on after I was finished. So just look at the picture for reference. I'm pretty sure you guys can search the internet and find something similar. But I wasn't about to do a whole long Google search and just be scrolling through pictures until I found it. So just try to put it on the best you can. But like I said, you go ahead and you're going to single crochet your sleeve together. So now I'm at the end. And I'm sorry if my microphone is making noise, but it's kind of broke and I'm using my phone to do this voiceover because I didn't feel like doing it on my laptop. <laughs> so sorry if my voiceover is kind of trash. My microphone is old, the one that I use for my phone. So once you're done stitching up your sleeve, you go ahead and cut off the yarn. Now we're going to go back and grab that cuff that we made. I'm just taking my stitch markers out real quick. So we're going to grab our cuff and we're going to turn it right side out. You don't want it to be inside out. Your sleeve um, and your wrap sweater shawl thing, it should be inside out to where you can see the seam on the outside but you don't want the seam on the outside for your cuff because the way I sew mine, I'm putting the cuff inside of the sleeve and then I'm just going to put a stitch marker in it and um, single crochet all around until I close up and merge the sleeve and the cuff together. And like I said, the cuff is smaller than the actual sleeve is but I'm just going to stretch and hold my yarn at an appropriate way or angle so I can achieve what I'm trying to get I just want them to mesh well together and just become a whole sleeve so that is just me single crocheting around and y'all I have been so salty um, on social media lately. I don't know if you follow me on social media, but if you have, I've definitely been so super salty because I just feel like people keep <laughs> posting my luck sweater pattern and they're actually claiming it as theirs. Like I'm not mad when people repost it and they didn't put my name. Like if that's how you get down, that's how you get down. But to actually say that you created the sweater and saying that it's yours, like you made it, like, yeah, you, cre you, you made it with the yarn, but you didn't create the pattern. And people out here letting people be in their comments believing that they made this pattern. And it's really, really pissing me off. So I wasn't going to drop this video, but I was just like, why not? People asked me to show them how to make it. And I don't even know if I made it correctly. So I just gave my little take on it, as I always do. And I hope whoever can appreciate it does appreciate it. But... Ooh, y'all, y'all don't understand how salty I was. Ooh, I'm still a little bit salty. <laughs> it's so trifling how people get down these days. But I mean, hey, what can I do? So anyway, back to this sweater. This is basically what my sleeve looks like when I turn it right side out. It all meshes together. So you do that on your other sleeve and boom, you're done. Basically unless you wanted to go ahead and sew yours together after you put it on. I really should have showed you in the video, but maybe I'll show a video of me sewing it and how it looks when I sew it on and line it. But you should definitely sew it, like I said, in the front, um, just to keep it closed so it doesn't open up on you when you try to wear it or if you try to move your arms because it's very uncomfortable. When I put it on, it was uncomfortable, but maybe it was because I didn't have a shirt on underneath it. I don't know. But to me, it was super cute though, and I'm about to show you in a minute. So here's how it looks on, and I'll see you guys in a new video.
Bye, guys. Yeah.